Okay, we're back and we're going to do a different version of the same proof. Recall now that we are, we have a function f from set x to set y. We want to prove this, um, this set theory uh, result that if f is injective, f is injective if and only if for every subset a of the domain uh, that the pre-image of the image of the subset A is actually identical to A. And uh, we always have the fact, regardless if F is injective or not, that A is a subset of the pre-image of the image of A. That's always the case, regardless if F is injective, if F is injective or not. But with F is injective, then we have also the case where this set on the left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side. And I proved that already in class. So now I'm going to do the reverse direction, which is... Um, proving that if this case holds for every single subset A of X, that F is injective. And I'm going to prove this directly. Previously, I proved this by contrapositive. Um, some folks say that the uh, direct proofs of this nature are stronger in some way. But technically speaking, a contrapositive proof is still a direct proof. It's just not Q applies not P. Okay, let us begin. Okay, so let us assume um, the hypothesis. So we're going to assume that for every subset, for every subset A of X, we have the inverse image of F of A equals A. Uh, by the way, in formal proofs, this is very ugly, especially because we have for all, which looks upside down A next to an A. Don't do that. I'm just writing blackboard scratch work so that but when you write the formal proof, do not do that. Okay, so let's assume for every subset A of X we have the, this set equality. Um, we want to show that F is injected. So we start injected proofs that way we always do. We say, suppose f of x1 equals y equals f of x2 for some x1, x2 in capital X and y in capital Y. So it suffices to show x1 equals x2, right? Okay, this is going to look similar to the other proofs that I did on by contrapositive, but this will be discerned slightly different because we're proving um, well, completely different things. Okay, so let's set A to be equal to the set containing X2. So we have this helpful diagram again. We have X1 and X2 over here in the domain. They map to this particular Y in the range. Um, and I'm going to set A to be the set that contains just X2. So remember, our goal is to show that X1 equals X2. And I'm going to use this fact A here because I know the inverse image of the image of the set containing X2 is exactly equal to X2. That's where I'll be using this in the future. That's why I, I picked one. Pick one of every possible subset. This is just one. And this should still be true, because we're assuming this is true. Okay. All right. So clearly, Y is an element of the image of the set containing X2. Thus, the inverse image of the image of the set containing X2 has some things in it. So, y is in this set, f of x2, but the pre-image is going to be x1, it's going to be x2, maybe there's other stuff, maybe there's other stuff that maps that, you know, maybe there's other things going up to x2, we don't know, and we don't care, but we know at least that x1 and x2 um, are in here, and possibly more stuff, possibly more stuff are in here, and so 
If anything, we don't know what those are, and we don't really care, but we do know at least of all those things, this set is at least a subset of that. In particular, x1 is an element of this set. It's like one of those two things. So, in particular, x1 is an element of the inverse image of the image of the set containing x2. Uh, by assumption now, by assumption, we have this set equality for every A, including this particular A. So by assumption, the inverse image of the image of the set containing X2 is just the set containing X2. That's true by assumption. I'm just letting A equal the set containing X2. So the inverse image of F of A equals A. And X1 is inside of this set, this set, which is equal to this set. Did I say thus recently? Let's say hence. Hence. X1 is an element of a set containing X2. Hmm. You might say to yourself. X1 is an element of the set that only contains one element, and that one element is called X2. <laughs> That's like saying... Bob lives in a house, and the house, there's only one person that lives there, and that's like Abba. So if Bob lives in the house and only Abba lives in that house, then Bob must be Abba. But I'm not Bob. <laughs> that's a joke. I'm Abba. Okay, in any case, this forces, forces x1 to be equal to x2. Therefore, f is injected. QED. I like this proof better than the contrapositive. It seems a little bit more direct, well, possibly because it is a direct proof. But um, again, contrapositive proofs are also direct, but they're direct in the other direction. So I um, guess that's all to say. Whose house? Bob's house. Abba's house. Okay, thanks. Learn this proof. It's a good one.